You never see me do my cuttings, huh? You're so cute. I love you. Yeah. Hi. I love you, baby boy. Mm. Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I know I have. And it's time for another metal detecting or relic hunting adventure. In this week's episode, we're back at the site where we've been finding late 16s to early 1800s relics and coins. And believe me when I say this hunt is another one for the books. We found even more evidence that this was a fur trading post, or at least an area that saw significant Native American activity back in the day. And I dug one of my best relics of the year. Actually, make that my whole metal detecting career because this thing is absolutely amazing. So let's not waste too much time at all, but per usual, two orders of business before we get started. Number one, if you enjoy the video that you're about to watch, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss a video in the future. Subscribing is free, it helps this channel grow, and perhaps most importantly, it keeps me encouraged to keep making these videos for you. Second order of business, we are still taking Mind Lab Manticore pre-orders at the Digger's Den, and if you want to get on the list, make sure that you email me at stephdiggs at gmail.com or you can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram as well. And hey, reach out to me if you need anything else metal detecting related. It's not all about the manticore. It kind of is. And anyway, no more time wasting. Let's hop in. All right, slamming little 16 signal. It's about six inches down. I just took it out, but I don't know what it is yet. Looks like some kind of buckle. Ooh, it looks like we have a really old buckle. Oh yeah, we do. Wow, I wish that was <laughs> not busted up like that. That actually looks like a 17th century buckle. I think that's a 1600s buckle right there. Unfortunately, it appears to be made out of pewter and it was smacked. I don't think I did that. Let me brush that off, I'll come back. Well, unfortunately, I highly doubt this is gonna make the trip home. I just kind of bent it back stupidly and this is hanging by a thread now. So not sure what's gonna happen with that, but pewter is just so, so, so tough, especially when it's been in the ground over 300 years. Oh, nice little find though. We'll keep going. Hey, Petrie. Petrie, say hi to YouTube. Hi. The doggo with me today. Nick's here too. I got a 16 signal. Just flung it out over here. It's another piece of brass. And that's very interesting. Oh, you know what? That looks like an escutcheon plate. In really good condition, too. Let me brush that off. Well, there it is. It's beautiful. That's all hand-tooled right there. This is dated to right around 1700, if memory serves. Back, obviously, isn't going to have a pattern because that's what would be up against your furniture. So this would have been the backing for, like, a drawer pull on a dresser. It does appear to be missing a little bit of it. I just noticed that. But very cool find. Encouraging. And we'll keep moving. Well, Nick thinks she has a copper. I hope so. But you said it rang up a 16? Yep. I've had one ring up that way. Where is it? Oh, huh. it's a little guy. Or maybe it's a tag of some kind. Oh, wow. oh, oh, it's a button. Man. All right. Oh, but look, you can see like a, a back mark struck through right there. Let me see that. It's cool. Let's see what we actually have on that. Maybe a little something. Let me see Possibly. it. Possibly. I found a button this size the other day. I'm seeing like lines or something. Maybe just a nice pattern on there. And you should have a decent back mark. That's what it kind of looked like. Although that was popping the dirt off the front. Actually, I can't remember. That was the back. That, that, that was the back? Okay. Uh, Look yeah. how off-center <laughs> that shank is, guys. That's really cool. Look at it, Nick. See the off-center? <laughs> That's cool. Might not be a copper, but nice big old button. At least it's something. Yep, and I have something really cool over in my hole if you want to come see. All right, I was on the other side of the field here. Got a 19 signal and I knew, I knew, I knew I should have filmed it. I just had a feeling. I started rubbing it off. 
Ah, where'd it go? I started rubbing it off, and then I saw very quickly that it was silver. Looks like we have a tiny little silver ring here. Mm, it's broken, unfortunately, but let me uh, spray that off. We'll see if we have any marks on the inside to help date it. It's awesome. How about that? That's a pretty cool ring. Um, I'm not finding any markings. And it looks like it might be adjustable, which unfortunately makes this probably like early 1900s at the very earliest, which is not what I'm looking for. You guys know I'm looking for older, but it's very cool. And I could be completely wrong because it doesn't even have any markings on there. It looks really old. I don't know. Um, I will consult with my jeweler friend on that, and hopefully I'll have an age on the screen. I'm sure I will. You know, and it, it might not be adjustable. It might be that somebody actually, you know, it just got cut or something. I have no idea, and then just rolled in on itself. So maybe that was like a home job. I have no idea. I am lost on this, but I really can't find any markings right now. So we'll just have to be happy at the moment that that's a silver ring. That's my second one this year, and I don't really find rings just, you know, because the areas I hunt... You know, I don't do parks, I don't do beaches or anything like that. So every time I find a ring, it is a treat. So I will treasure that. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how old this is. mentioned my jeweler friend as I was pondering over how old that ring might really be. I reached out to her with several close-ups of the ring that were taken through a jeweler's loop to see if she had any insight on this whatsoever. And normally she is so good that she gets right back to me and she is right all the time. It's kind of crazy. And maybe that's because she specializes in antique jewelry, which is what I tend to dig given the areas that I hunt. Makes sense, right? Well, this time... She honestly had no idea. She said that she had never seen a ring that looks like mine made in the way that it is. And that without the context I had provided, she would have assumed a 20th century artisan ring. And frankly, for a minute there, I was thinking the same thing. But as the days went on after that hunt, the more I handled the ring, the more close up I looked at it, I knew I had to get yet another opinion. And that's when I reached out to an expert on Native American fur trade. He's dug hundreds to thousands of relics that fall right in this pipeline. Now, I sent him the same photos that I had sent to my jeweler friend, offered some context, and he immediately blew it off as a 20th century or relatively modern adjustable ring and said that there was no possible way it was trade related. Now, to be fair, this fur trade expert is a very well-respected member of our community and I have nothing but nice things to say about him. He's been so helpful with many of the relics I've dug and I thank him profusely every time for the amount of time that he spends talking with me about what I dig. However, in this one instance, I had a feeling that my ring was just getting overlooked. I mean, just look at this tarnish. It looks really old. Not to mention, if you look over at that image on the right, you're gonna see, if you wanna pause the video, you might need to, some really defined scratches within those little grooves. They're little abrasion marks. And I mean, that pattern on the front is like nothing that I've ever seen before. So I wasn't quite ready to chuck this in a drawer with my modern jewelry finds. And so I made one last ditch attempt to try to get an identification on this ring and I went ahead and posted it in the fur trading group on Facebook. This group is loaded with experts on the fur trade and people who have been digging specifically and almost exclusively fur trading sites for decades. So while it's not always the case with a Facebook group, it is with this one where you're getting really good, solid information. And almost as soon as I posted it, well, you could take a guess what happened or we wouldn't be here. And the title of the video on my thumbnail wouldn't be Trade Silver. Yeah, it's a Trade Silver ring. And given the overwhelming response that I have received, I am very confident with the ID. Oh, and evidently, even all the way back in the 1700s, some silver rings were cut to be made 
adjustable, at least when it comes to fur trade rings, evidently. Now, here are some images from a book that I want you to take a look at. The name of the book is A Pictorial History of Fur Trade Goods, mid-1600s to early 1800s. And the pictures speak for themselves. It could not be any more evident that the grooves on my ring are echoed across a lot of different fur trade silver jewelry. So I can't believe I made that find. Absolutely incredible, but some things to keep in mind. Number one, I put a link in the description below to the book um, that I took some photos from for the sake of this video because it is absolutely incredible. It's a little bit pricey, but if the fur trade interests you and you wanna just see some absolute fur trade relic porn, this is the book for you. I mean, it's just, oh my God, I'm just drooling just thinking about it. I love this book. Now, second thing, it's important to note here that I did not jump to the conclusion of a trade ring. In fact, the elapsed time of me digging the ring to fully identifying it was a process that took several weeks. And it goes to show that if you have a hunch about something, you need to continue your research. But this is crucial. There is a very fine line between having a hunch and trying to think that something is just a little bit more exciting than it really is. In other words, don't claim that you've found the holy grail if you're not 100% sure. And furthermore, I'm gonna stand on my soapbox for a minute while I have it. I don't care what your level of expertise is. If you're not open to learning new things all the time or admitting when you have misidentified something, then you're in the wrong hobby, period. Now, it's quite obviously not everyone's philosophy, but if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know where I stand on that topic. We have a really great responsibility to accurately identify the relics and coins that we dig from the ground, if and whenever possible. All of that commentary aside, this is one of the best finds I have ever made in my metal detecting career, and I cannot tell you how proud I am to have this in my collection to pass down to other generations for study and display for years and years to come. Back to the show. All right, deep, deep, deep 14 signal. Just got it out, I haven't really looked at it. I think it might be another escutcheon plate, which it is. It's the same age as that other one too, because this will have hand tooling on it. Uh, I don't think you can see it very well right now, but you saw the other one, so you know what they look like. I won't waste any time brushing this off, but hey, another good find. Another very deep one. Good eight or nine inches there. Took me a while to fling it out. It was all over the place. That was like 19 and 24 to teens to iron to, oh, let's just see what it is. It is a button. I can feel the shank. Ooh, it looks like it's gonna have a cool back mark. I'll come back. Well, it's not coming through quite yet and I wanna keep moving, so I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on this, but Looks like it has a nice wreath of some kind on the back. And I think that's gonna date maybe 1820s to 1840s. I don't see anything on the front yet, but maybe I will once I clean it up. Well, it would seem we're having a good day collectively. Hi, Petri. Don't eat any poison ivy. Hi, sweetie. She's ticking something else up right now. But she told me what she's found, and I want to see it. What, are you, what number are you pinpointing right now? Oh. What is it? Oh, that maybe? Gold? Oh, I dug one very close to here. Yep, that's exactly what that is. Gold I can bring it with, I can, uh, no, it's uh, silver wash. Whew, that's pretty caked on there. I might have just broke that because... Uh, it's away. possible. It looks like it there, no, maybe. it's not. Oh, okay. wait. Did you find more of it? No. Eh, mine was pretty crumbly too, but yeah, this is like an early to mid 1800s uh, horse bridle rosette. And that will clean up really nice. We should get some lemon juice on the way home because we have nothing and I can't find the citric acid and I have to clean my ring and you have something else to clean. What a good segue, that was a good segue. I got I'm excited couple. for you because you don't even have one of these, do you? I got a couple bullet spills. <laughs> bullet spills here, take your rosette. Um. Well, that's not exciting. <laughs> but what she's about to show me is... Boom! Wow! Look at that honker! 
It's huge. <laughs> oh my God. So that's her first silver thimble. Unbelievable. That's an older one, Nick. I don't think that that's like the late 1800s, early 1900s style that I've been finding. I really think that's a little older. Top is more rounded too. I mean, it's probably like early 1800s, maybe mid 1800s. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I should probably just stick to what I know. But that's cool. If we get a date range on that, I'll put that on the screen. But otherwise, very nice. Well, here I am taking a break. Nick found something else. What do you think it is? A brooch or something? Uh, I'm not sure. Looks like it had a nail. Nail in it. Oh, that's horse tack, actually. Oh, oh. no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Is this horse tack or is this something really cool that I wanted? I think this is something really cool that I wanted to find. Uh, and that would be what? I think it's a musket thumb plate. Oh. I think it might be. Because it's definitely meant to be nailed into leather or wood. Mm. It looks more like a leather adornment with these pins, but I don't know. Mm, we'll have to get back to you on that, but either way, it's very cool. Whatever it is. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. That's what we're watching today. That was horrible. I'm going to want to edit that out, but I won't. <laughs> Just for his 90s kids. Oh. What have we here? That looks like a wicked old coin of some kind. What the heck is it? It's smaller than a farthing. It was a 1718 on the Equinox, and she's like, oh, I think it's a French Liard. Actually, I think you might be right. It might be a fleur de lis at the tip of my thumb there. You see it? I see. These are really, I mean, that's a 400-year-old coin if that's <laughs> what that is, so be careful with that. That might get the peroxide job or something instead of brushing it off. Yeah. Something weird. We'll figure it out one way or another, though. We always do. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> sick of seeing your face <laughs> i'm just kidding um okay. nick has this fun habit of the moment she finds a coin she's ready to go home but she thinks she might have another one what did you say 19 1920 oh yeah that's a good number or a big fat musket ball or a big fat piece of crapola although with the day you're having it's probably something pretty good i hope so there's Whoa, hey, nice. Shoe buckle shape. You sure you don't want to stay out here? Come on, you're having a good day. <laughs> While you're on fire, I stay out here. I never said I was leaving, so. You told me you were leaving. No, or... I didn't. I said I was thinking about it. Oh, let's argue on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so this is a part of a shoe buckle, colonial shoe buckle. This will date probably to the mid to late 1700s. And these little sharp teeth hit here is uh, what would stick into the leather first before you would um, adjust the buckle or something like that. Something like that, but that's very cool. Nice little buckle piece. What, you think you have the whole shoe buckle down there? No, the whole shoe? I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. All right, nice find. Okay, 12 to 13 signal. Not very deep, I already know what this is. I just took a quick peek at it. This is part of a corset. It's actually a corset clasp that would fasten one side to the other down the front. I'll throw an example on the screen right now so you can see what I'm talking about, what these clasps look like when they're new. But yeah, that's a decent find. We know there were women doing stuff and things out here, you know, between the ring and the thimble and other stuff that we found. So that lines up perfectly. Okay, we're gonna do a live dig here. What do you have? Uh, it's like 25 to 28 it's jumpy. Yeah, well, that sounds pretty good though. Another really deep one over here is about nine or ten inches probably. And I just got it up. A piece of bread. Oh, it's a part of a crotal bell. 
Wow, you know what's funny? The last Croto Bell I found was like, kind of in that bald patch over there. So I wonder if a whole like, you know, sleigh bells worth of bells were lost here and over the years people have been digging them up. Huh, I think that's a, you know what? That looks like a B, I think. Might be a number eight, I don't know. But uh, I should be able to figure out exactly how old this is based on that maker's mark. At least I think it's a maker's mark. Like I said, it could be a number. But uh, that's pretty awesome. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, that is all the hunting for today. As you saw, Nick had an absolutely incredible day, but I made my own one incredible find. And this will absolutely be a hunt for us to remember for years to come. So I hope you guys are getting out there, saving what you can, and doing what you love. And we will see you next week.